which followed the night Muhammad was shot to death. Specifically, we're going to raise a dozen serious questions that need to be answered by the people in that building and by the people at City Hall. We want the Commissioner Ray Kelly and the Mayor Michael Bloomberg to begin to speak to these questions. First, what NYPD personnel was present? Who was in charge that night? Second, was a Fulani interpreter requested by the NYPD as provided for in the patrol guide? Third, most important, why was Ms. Ba, Hawaba, Muhammad's mother, why was her request to assist denied in light of the procedure number 216-05 of the NYP patrol guide which states, and I quote, if necessary, request assistance of subjects, family, or friends. The family and friends were there that night. They were in front of the building. The police didn't have to request the assistance. They wanted to assist. And the police kept telling the mother, no, we'll take care of it. They surely did take care of it. Fourth, what plan and tactics were developed that evening to ameliorate the situation? And who was responsible for executing the plan? Five, were protective shields deployed as required under 216.05? Witnesses told us that police had to detect the protective shields. And even if the allegation truth turns out to be true, that Muhammad had a knife, if they had the shields in front of them, the knife could have not touched anybody. It was required to have the shields there. We were told they had the shields. If they went into the apartment, did they go with the shields or not? Was a 20-foot zone of safety created? The patrol guide says in these situations, you should have a minimum 20 feet. So if the person is emotionally upset, you're standing back. And even if he had a knife and he was lunging, if you're 20 feet away, you're not in harm's way. When was Muhammad shot? It's reported that the 911 call occurred at 6.40 p.m. that evening. We have information to believe that he was dead by 7.30 that night. What was the reason to rush the judgment? He's in the apartment alone. There's no one in the apartment. Why do you have to rush the apartment? Cut off the electricity. Cut off the water. Send in a cell phone. Let people talk to him. You've seen those situations before where people at the NYPD are supposedly skilled in talking people down. Where were they that night? And finally, there's a provision which is called the hostage barricade person provision. I want to focus on three important points in that protocol. And remember, this is their protocol. They created these rules. The question is, did they follow them? For example, it states when there is time to negotiate, all the time necessary to ensure the safety of the individuals concerned will be used. Therefore, question nine, was all the time necessary to deal with the situation taken? It doesn't appear to be that way. Next, it says, and I quote, if a barricade person is contained and possesses no immediate threat or danger to any person, no additional action will be taken. No additional action will be taken without the authorization of the precinct commander or the duty captain and the key words, at the scene. Therefore, question 10, was this done? Was either the precinct commander or the duty captain at the scene that night? Because if they weren't, they weren't supposed to take any action. And finally, 
the following statement in the patrol guide, very important. Uniformed members of the service are reminded, although the New York State penal law and the department procedures may authorize the use of deadly force in a given situation, listen next, they will not, will not be subject to criticism or disciplinary action for choosing not to discharge their weapons. This is another indication that when you have a situation like this, you don't draw your guns and you don't fire unless there's no other recourse. Therefore, the question here is, how did we ever get to the point that deadly force was employed and did we have to use such force? I know people are focusing in and the headline said, deranged man lunging with knife. That's not the important question. The important question is, how did it ever get to that point? If he's in the apartment alone and he's not creating any danger to anyone, leave him there. Let him stay there. He's not going anywhere. He's not hurting anyone. He should never have wound up dead. And if they left him in there and they let the mom come up to the fifth floor and they let the mom talk through the door, he could be alive today. Yes. 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 The Bob family, and they're a very impressive family, similar to the Diallo family. They've met with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, and they have been professional, and they have been very empathetic. I have been impressed with their commitment so far to get justice in this case.